Welcome to the third video in the series on Edmund Husserl's logical investigations. This video will focus on the third logical investigation on the theory of wholes and parts. Now, phenomenology is different from other sciences in that it deals with essences rather than facts, and it deals with a priori laws, for example, rather than just the set of a posteriorly given uh, facts regarding this or that empirical uh, type of object. And the, therefore, having a properly defined uh, theory of wholes and parts is actually going to be essential to the science of phenomenology as dealing with essences and dealing with a priori concerns. And the way that Husserl does this is by expanding the definition of a part beyond the naive understanding of parts and wholes to include some things you may not normally think of. For example, uh, if you take a guitar, like a Gibson SG, which is red and shaped a certain way, you obviously have some parts like the neck of that guitar. Um, the neck of the guitar is what he would call a constituent part of the guitar, but that's not the only type of part. You also have, for example, relational parts. The guitar could be to the left of a whiteboard, and that is still a part. The difference is that the neck of the guitar as a constituent part is separately presentable. You can present that neck separately from the guitar, and therefore it's not really a neck. It's more like now just a piece of wood, but you can't do that with relational parts. You can't separately present uh, the relation of being to the left of something else. Um, it depends upon the um, other object, for example, also to, to be presented that way. However, there are also some constituent parts which are non-independent parts. For example, the color of the guitar as being red is a constituent rather than relational part, but it's not separately presentable. And one of the reasons why it's not separately presentable is that uh, the color red, for example, cannot be presented without extension. But extension also can't be presented without color. You can't just present extension colorlessly, um, or just like you can't present color without being in extension. But they're still separate parts, and proof of this is that you can vary each independently. For example, with a red uh, SG guitar, you can change the color to black but keep the same extension. Or you could change the extension but keep the color red. This proves that even though they can't be presented without each other, they're still, they're still separate parts that are independent of each other. But parts can also be independent relative to one certain whole but dependent to another. For example, you can present the uh, neck of the guitar separate from the rest of the guitar and make it just a piece of wood, but you can't present it independently completely of a background to presentation. Nor can you, for example, present color without extension. And he says this inability is not merely psychological, like a limitation of our brain. It's rather something that reveals the essence of objectivities in their purity rather than empirical contingency, and that is the concern of phenomenology. Therefore, the difference between abstract and concrete parts is understood as an abstract part he calls a moment, and the relation of a moment is that it is always the part of a whole, but a concrete part he calls a piece, and that is a part which can be its own whole. So the difference is, for example, the color red is an abstract moment of the guitar, which is always a part of a whole, but the um, neck of the guitar is a concrete piece, which as a piece can be presented separately. However, even though something can't be presented separately, it can still be considered separately. An abstract moment like the color red of the guitar can't be presented separately as just red, but it can still be considered as, you know, uh, separately as just red, and that uh, ties into the uh, ability to vary color without varying the extension, etc. Therefore, Husserl notes that there are certain laws about the relation of parts and wholes, which are a priori laws, which you can unearth. For example, the law that color can only be presented with extension and extension with color is an a priori rather than empirical law. But there's also the notion of foundation. Red is founded upon shape. And also a whole is the foundation of its parts. And this allows him to uh, revisit the analytic synthetic distinction in uh, Kant, for example, by showing that the laws of unity of moments 
depends on the essences of those moments. For example, if you look at the distinction between um, formal and material in Husserl's thought, of course, formal ontology deals with, you know, categorical understandings of any object whatsoever, whereas material um, concepts deal with a set of, in his later thought, especially different regions, which are not all grouped under one single heading, but are actually separate sciences dealing with the region of uh, spatial, temporal, physical objectivities, the region of psychic events, etc. And the difference... Um, is that formal laws of an object are the concerns of the analytic a priori. Material essences are the concern of the synthetic a priori. Formal ontology is the set of analytic a priori laws that are irrelevant to the nature of the moments as indigenous to a sphere of material ontology and irrelevant to the assertion of the very existence of the object. For example, an analytic a priori law is any whole includes its parts. But a synthetic relation that you can uh, understand with the parts whole theory is, for example, the synthetic notion that even though color and extension are not presupposing of one another intrinsically, for example, color does not presuppose the concept of extension at an analytic a priori level, but they still actually require each other for presentation. This is a synthetic rather than analytic law. The fact that you can only have color if you have extension, you can only have extension if you have color. There's no way to get the concept of extension just from the concept of color and vice versa. This is the difference between analytic and synthetic.